Hey guys, Lunar Spawn 27 here, bringing you Toriko Chapter 296, Commander of the Ecosystem. So the chapter begins as we see Coco, Sunny, and Zebra inside the Den Shark, wondering if Akasi Soup Pear will be able to heal Kamatsu's wound. Now, from what I can tell in this chapter, it seems that the Dharma Hermit told them where Pear is, yet it doesn't seem like he told them how to prepare it and how Pear is supposed to heal Kamatsu's wound. Maybe there will be a flashback of the Dharma Hermit telling the Four Heavenly Kings how to prepare the soup. Maybe the soup doesn't need preparing. Maybe we'll know once Pear is revealed or when the Four Heavenly Kings get to Pear. With Toriko, he returns after checking on Kamatsu's condition, which according to him, nothing has changed. As of right now, Kamatsu is at the head car in the Den Shark, which is the highest safe zone, and he is wrapped in a barrier created by Zebra's sound armor, Sunny's remote hair, and Coco's poison in order to protect him. As for Terry, Quinn, and Kiss, they're riding at the caboose of the den shark which is the weakest safe zone so they'll be able to detect anything strange happening suddenly the group is under attack as they assume that enemy beasts already found them but it turns out that they're giant sea urchins falling down from the sky you know considering that in gourmet world we've seen freaking mountains raining down from the sky i'm not surprised at this point sunny was going to use the riddle chapter to figure out if these things are actually sea urchins but zebra tells them that's a pain in the ass and uses voice missile to blow them up with Toriko's sense of smell, he figured out that these things aren't creatures, but they're actually pollen. Giant grains of pollen. Area 7 comes into view, and holy shit, this is one big-ass continent. They are ants compared to this place. Holy shit, just how huge is this place anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked, and I'll be happy to explain it to you. Area 7 the largest continent in area in the gourmet world following Area 4. Its area covers a staggering 840 million square kilometers. Currently, the area of the Earth that we are living on is roughly 510 million square kilometers. This continent is so gigantic that it can fit the Earth in its entirety into it. The abnormal nature here is home to a lot of different plant life, mountains and trees, rivers and lakes, and many other plants and animals. Everything here is included in the world's five largest of their respective species here in this truly mammoth continent. Huh. Okay, I wasn't expecting you to do something like this, but considering that we didn't do a lot of recaps... Wait a minute, did you just say that the entire planet can fit in this one continent? And Area 4 is bigger than Area 7? Actually, Area 7 is so large, it can fit almost two planets, not just one. And, yes, I believe Area 4 might be bigger than Area 7. Well, I, um, yeah, you gotta give kudos to Shimabukuro's world building, that's for sure. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is only the second continent. Anyway, the group has now made it to Area 7, but just when they finally reached land, they're already surrounded by a bunch of creatures. Well, that escalated quickly. And knowing that they found the Den Shark, they must have capture levels over 600. But before they can do anything to the group, the creatures just flee. Since Area 7 is a place where indiscriminate predation is not allowed, apparently one has to gain permission from above obviously referring to the Monkey King, in order to attack other creatures. So I guess this applies to carnivores who want to eat other creatures, but they can't because they have to get permission from the Monkey King. God damn, this is really turning into the Planet of the Apes. So the group has no choice but to avoid any needless killing, as the Dent Shark keeps on going, but we get this one panel where we see a foot, looks like a monkey's foot, coming out of the grass. Back with the group, who, by the way, look like tiny ants, compared to everything in Area 7. Seriously, everything in this continent is huge. At least the Dharma Hermit told them some information about how to find air. First, they have to go to the Birth Cry Tree, which apparently is the third tallest tree in the world. Once they get there, they might be able to find a hint regarding Pear, or they might find Pear itself over there. As for any civilizations left in Area 7, the Dharma Hermit didn't tell them anything about it, but if he did know anything, he would have told them. So it's safe to assume that the civilization in Area 7 was destroyed or collapsed a long time ago. However, Zebra sensed something is inside the train and is coming towards them. As they open the doors, they see a couple of cars away from them, this very ugly and creepy monkey. And in case you guys are wondering about the sensor bar, well, its balls were dangling, so yeah. 
Seriously, Shimmer Book Girl, just why? Well, anyway, as if this monkey couldn't get any creepier, it opens its mouth and it kind of looks like the Nitro's mouth, except its top lips were split in half and it has multiple rows of teeth. And it seems that this monkey is going to attack them, which means that it already gained permission from the Monkey King. So, Zebra assumes that it's okay for them to fight back and does this. I'm a fire in the laser! <laughs> That joke was completely necessary because his technique was called laser voice. It causes an explosion inside the den shark. As we see the monkey all bruised and a chunk of its body is missing. The zebra then grabs the monkey's head and tells him this. I don't know what kind of rules you got going on this here continent, but those don't mean shit to me. I'm the rule, so all y'all better adapt to me. Okay, I'm not gonna lie here. Zebra was freaking badass, but... He kind of messed up. There is supposed to be no senseless killing in this continent. No indiscriminate predation unless you get permission from the Monkey King. And I guess it's not okay for them to fight back because they too did not gain permission from above. Speaking of the monkey, it was still alive and manages to at least grin. And then it opens its mouth even wider, revealing like multiple lips and more rows of teeth. Seriously, what the fuck kind of monkey is this thing? It emits a huge screech coming out of its mouth, but Zebra blows its head off with another laser voice. Okay, that is also cool, but since Zebra killed the monkey, that screech that the monkey unleashed was its way of calling for somebody. Which also means that the group is going to get attacked by a pack of monkeys. And that is where the chapter ends. So yeah, that is Toriko chapter 296. What did I think? Honestly, I thought this chapter was good. I wish we would have gotten more information about Pear and how it's going to be prepared. And how it's supposed to help heal Komatsu. But we probably won't get that until once Pear has been revealed. Once they get to Pear. As for Area 7, once once again, Shimabukuro surprises me with his uh, world building and his imagination, creating a continent so huge that you can fit almost two planet Earths into it. That is how freaking huge this area is. And Area 4 is supposed to be either just as big as Area 7 or even bigger. This is like the second continent and we got like five more to go. The monkey itself was very creepy in this chapter and knowing that it got attacked, the four heavenly kings can't technically attack other creatures or kill them because they haven't gotten permission from the Monkey King or from above. Had to call out for um, his group so the Four Heavenly Kings are going to be attacked by monkeys. From what has been shown in this chapter, it seems that this arc is going to focus a lot more on Zebra. In the previous arc, the Air arc, there was a lot more focus on Toriko and a bit on Komatsu. And to be frank, I'm kind of glad we're shifting focus away from Toriko and moving on to another one of the Four Heavenly Kings. And knowing that Zebra is the problem child of the Four Heavenly Kings, this definitely confirms that he is definitely going to face off against the problem child of the Eight King of Beasts, the Monkey King. That is something I really, really want to see, but considering that this Monkey King is stronger than the Horse King, I don't know if Zebra will be able to beat this creature, but if this means we're going to focus more on Zebra, then I'm all for it. But I don't think he's going to add Pear to his full course menu, because if I recall, Zebra already has the soup for his uh, full course menu. So overall, I thought this chapter was good. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what happens next. I know that next week they're going to get attacked by monkeys, but they obviously have to defend themselves somehow. They have to avoid senseless killing, but it's technically self-defense. But then again, you're at a continent where indiscriminate predation is not allowed. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens in next week's chapter. So tell me guys, what are your thoughts on this week's chapter of Toriko? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Any ideas on how Pear is supposed to heal Komatsu? And what are your thoughts on Area 7 so far and this creepy ass monkey let me know in the comments below be sure to like the video if you like it and subscribe to more videos and be sure to check out my facebook fan page and google plus so yeah that is toriko chapter 296 i'm gonna respond 27 and i will see you guys later bye